it is a recognized fact in the field of investment that an optimal portfolio cannot be derived simply by adding numerous individual investments with the characteristics of a uh, merely risk and return rather to design an optimal portfolio an investor must consider the relationship between the investments so that an an investment objective can be met effectively and efficiently now how to design an optimal portfolio is the subject of portfolio theory there are certain background assumptions of this theory uh, these say that an investor wants to maximize his return from all of the investments he holds for a certain level of risk the portfolio of an investor includes all types of liabilities and assets the relation between the returns of all of the assets in the investment portfolio is very much important because it is the returns of the investment in the portfolio and the underlying uh, investments risk that determine trade off for the investor so we can say that a good portfolio is not merely the a uh, collection of individually good securities there is a concept of risk aversion which says that given a choice between two assets with equal return most of the investors will will go for the investments having least riskiness it is said that investors are risk averse and we have certain evidence mean uh, example may include insurance plan where someone pays a little amount at present in order to avoid a larger amount of cash outflow in future similarly different grades of bonds with varying yields of varying degree of credit risk are offered to uh, the investors of varying likings for the riskiness uh, not everybody is a risk averse similarly neither the investors are fully risk averse so this means that risk preference and risk aversion are basically the attitudes towards the risk which is also subject to the amount involved uh, we can conclude this discussion here while saying that recognizing the attitude of the risk preference and the risk aversion we can derive an assumption that most of the investors with the large investment portfolio are risk averse and a positive relationship therefore can be expected between the expected return on the investment and the risk associated with these investments now let we talk about markowitz portfolio theory in the early 60s uh, the term risk was talked without using an appropriate risk measure it was the markowitz who at first developed basic portfolio model uh, his portfolio theory basically quantified the riskiness of investment into an appropriate risk measure uh, the markowitz portfolio theory derives expected return of a portfolio for or a portfolio of assets and the associated expected riskiness of these assets in the portfolio this theory shows that variance of the return on the assets is a meaningful measure to determine the portfolio riskiness this portfolio theory derives the formula for computing the variance of a portfolio uh, showing that how to effectively diversify a portfolio so markowitz was the first first person that determined a, a, a riskiness formula Uh, to to measure the riskiness of a portfolio there are certain assumptions of the markowitz portfolio theory the first is that investors consider each investment alternative as being represented by a probability distribution of the expected rate of returns over some holding period and this holding period may be uh, of one week of one day one month one year and so on investors maximize one period expected utility and their utility curve show diminishing marginal utility of, of wealth this means that as they move towards higher riskiness of an investment 
देयर एक्सपेक्टेड रिस्क एक्सपेक्टेड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न गोज ऑन डिक्रीजिंग इन्वेस्टर्स एस्टिमेट रिस्क ऑफ द पोर्टफोलियो ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ वेरिएबिलिटी ऑफ द एक्सपेक्टेड रेट ऑफ रिटर्न्स सो हायर इज द वेरिएशन इन द रिटर्न्स लार्जर इज द रिस्कीनेस एसोसिएटेड विद दीज रिटर्न्स इन्वेस्टर्स बेस देयर डिसीजंस सोलली ऑन द एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न्स एंड द रिस्क सो देयर यूटिलिटी कर्व्स आर द फंक्शन ऑफ एक्सपेक्टेड रिटर्न एंड द एक्सपेक्टेड वेरिएंस ऑफ द रिटर्न्स ओनली सो रिस्क एंड रिटर्न determine the trade off for the investor as per this particular theorem for a given level of riskiness the investors uh, prefer higher returns this means that for a given level of expected return the investor will go for the investment that carries least riskiness this means that to be an efficient single asset of or portfolio of assets it must offer higher expected return with the uh, lesser risk or lesser risk with the expected uh, rate of return at the higher level so what are the expected rate of returns for it and how to determine these expected rate of returns for an individual asset Uh, expected rate of returns are the sum of the potential returns multiplied with the corresponding probability of each return and for a portfolio of assets a uh, weighted average of the expected returns are for the individual investments in the portfolio so for the uh, for for the portfolio returns we need to determine weighted averages in the uh, investment baskets of the portfolio now how to determine these weighted averages basically these weights are proportion of the total value of individual investment in the uh, portfolio to determine expected rate of return for individual assets let's take an example we have four probabilities four chances having a uh, assigned certain probability level and for each probability we have a corresponding rate of return when we multiply this possible rate of return with the probability we have expected rate of return the sum of these rate of return is then termed as the expected rate of return for individual risky asset to determine the expected rate of return for portfolio of an investment we have in the example four types of investments with their values in terms of absolute amount the uh, weights of these values are described here as 20% 30% 30% and 20% then we have the expected rate of return for each security the multiplication of these two columns give us the expected return of individual security and summing up these weighted returns we have an expected portfolio return which is 11.5% in the example like expected rate of returns we have also some the measures to measure the riskiness of individual asset and the portfolio of assets uh, here we have a measure called as variance or standard deviation of expected return it is a statistical measure of the dispersion of returns around the expected value this means that more dispersion in the expected returns greater is the uncertainty about the rate of returns uh, another measure is the range of returns this is basically the difference between the highest value and the lowest value in the series of returns uh, there is an advice for the investors as as how to uh, use the expected returns this advice says that consider returns below the expectations this means that advice can be termed as semi variance and semi variance uh, we means it is a measure that counts deviations below the mean now how can variance or standard deviation of return can be measured for individual investment uh, we can see a formula of variance on the screen then we have a model to determine the standard deviation 
we have uh, four possibilities or the four probabilities of returns we have four expected returns of a security we have a deviation which is actual returns minus the uh, average of these four returns then we have scare of these individual deviations we have probability of each return when we multiply this probability value with these deviation squared we have the sum of these probabilities of deviation squared and that is 0 0.000451 this is basically the variance now to standardize this we have another variance that is a standard deviation when we remove this square we have a standard deviation of 2.1237 and this is basically the riskiness of an individual asset